Hey there, hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video we're gonna solve one of the problems of Goldstein's classical mechanics book, which is the first derivation of chapter one. My name is Ricardo, I'm a professor at the Physics Institute of the Federal University of Goiás. In this derivation, we need to show that for a single particle with constant mass, the equation of motion implies the following differential equation for the kinetic energy. The time derivative of the kinetic energy is equal to the scalar product between the force and the velocity. And in the second part of this problem, we need to show that while if the mass varies with time, the corresponding equation is the time derivative of this product, mass and the kinetic energy, being equal to the scalar product between the force and the momentum. Okay, so let's solve the first part. We are in the scenario with constant mass, and the kinetic energy is defined as 1 over 2 mv squared. But since in this right-hand side of the equation, we do have a scalar product. Let's write the kinetic energy as a scalar product as well. So this is 1 over 2 m and the scalar product between v and v, v dot v. Calculating the time derivative of the kinetic energy of this function here, we do obtain 1 over 2 m, which is a fact, a constant factor, and the derivative of this product, v dot v, which is the derivative of v multiplied by v plus v multiplied by the, the derivative of v, which is two times the time derivative of v dot v, since we are using the commutative pro property of the scalar product. So now these factors cancel out, and since the mass is constant, we may write it inside the derivative. So we obtain the derivative of uh, mv dot v, and mv is the momentum, is the definition of the momentum. So now we have the time derivative of the momentum, which is going to be which is the force, in a, in a scalar product with the velocity, which is exactly what we were looking for to solve. But we can solve this problem in a different using a different method. We can use the equation of motion and try to verify if this product is going to be the time derivative of the kinetic energy. So, instead of writing the force, we are going to write it as uh, the time derivative of the momentum, which is the force, of course. And since the momentum is mv, and m is a constant, so we can write it as m time derivative of v dot v. And since we used, used this in the previous slide, the, the derivative of this product is two times the derivative of the velocity dot the velocity. So now we have this term here, which is this right-hand side of this equation here, except for the two. So this term is one over two, the derivative of the product. So since we, uh, we have this, this, the, the mass, this is going to be m over 2 and the derivative of v dot v. Since the m over 2 is a constant factor, we may write it inside the derivative and the result is the time derivative of this quantity here, 1 over 2 m v squared. And this is called kinetic energy. So, 
we just solve the, 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 the equation, we just verify this equation using this second method. Now the second part of the problem. If the mass varies with time, the corresponding equation is this one. So this is the scenario. The mass varies with time. Again, the kinetic en energy is 1 over 2 mv squared, which we, we can write it as 1 over 2 mv dot v. But since f, the force, is the time derivative of the momentum, and here this quantity is multiplied in a scalar product with the momentum, let's write the kinetic energy as a function of the momentum. So if you multiply this equation here by m in the numerator and in the denominator as well, this is going to be m squared v squared, which is, going to, which is p squared, over 2m. And doing the same, writing this as a scalar product, we have 1 over 2m p dot p. Okay, and we are going to write, we are going to calculate the time derivative of mass multiplied by this term here, the kinetic energy. So, mass will cancel out with this mass here. We need to calculate the time derivative of 1 over 2 p dot p. And the result of this is the time derivative of p dot p, since the de derivative of this product will result in a factor of 2, which will cancel out with this 2 here. And the result is this one. This term is exactly the force. So we just solve the problem. This is going to be, this is the force dot the momentum. So we just verified that uh, we, we, we can write this equation as uh, this time derivative of mass and uh, the kinetic energy. But solving these in a different way, this product here, the force dot the momentum, is the time derivative of the momentum dot the momentum. And using this, this equivalent uh, term as we did in the, in the previous slide, uh, we have that the time derivative of this product is 2 times this derivative of the momentum dot the momentum. So, since we have this term here, which is the same as the, this one except for the 2, this is going to be 1 over 2, and the, the time derivative of this product. And we can write this 1 over 2 inside the derivative and p dot p is the same as p squared and multiplying by m in the numerator and in the denominator as well we have this, this term here and you can identify that this term is the kinetic energy p squared, p squared over 2m p squared over 2m so we have, as a result, the time derivative of mass multiplying the kinetic energy as it is written here in the left-hand side of this equation.